You know, it's funny because um, some Blue Oyster Cult fans have a, a love-hate relationship with us. Yeah. And uh, uh, it was, you know, some of the fans actually um, are waiting to pounce on us. It's a, kind of a, a humorous thing. You know, that's not Eric singing. Eric, thank you so much for your time today. Um, there's, whenever something is happening with Blue Oyster Cult, everybody's talking about it in this bus and they make you do 2,000 interviews in one day. So uh, how are you doing right now? Are you, must be tiring Thanks experience. The sun is out, it's this nice weather. Uh, BOC has new product out, new old product. Yeah. That's why we do this piece. I'm ashamed to say the New York Mets have lost four games in a row. That's mea culpa. There you go. So, you know, there's room for improvement, but not with Blue Oyster Cult. Um, so this is a special release. You already mentioned it. You know, there's new old stuff. We'll get to that in just a second. But, you know, on April 12th, this album Ghost Source coming out. You've seen it all. You've done it all. So for you, going through these motions, is that same old, same old? Or is this a little special because of the fact that you're, you know, uh, revamping uh, songs that were written a long time ago? Well, this is an unusual project, I guess. Um, uh, you've heard the 12 songs, whatever did, yeah. it is, 11 or 12. Um, so this is more, I think this is a project for the hardcore fans. Um, and I know, I, you know, I'm on social media. So I do, I have a Facebook page with 5,000 uh, fans. And so I do have my ear to the ground. And we do have released two songs already. Mm -hmm. um, the first song, most of the hardcore fans seem to like. The second one, not so much because it was not written by a Blue Oyster Cult member. Um, and it was kind of poppy, you know, Don't Come Running to Me. It's written by my, uh, my friend, uh, Greg Winter. And... Um, it's uh it was not creepy enough for them. <laughs> Don't come running to me when it breaks your heart. You know, it's funny because um some blue oyster cult fans have a, a love hate relationship with us. Yeah. And uh, uh it was you know, some of the fans actually um are waiting to pounce on us. It's a, kind of a, a humorous thing. You know, that's not Eric singing. And I had to um, actually jump onto the page and said, yes, it is. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, one guy who's a bit of a wise ass had to um, saying, I'm going to double down on this. That's one of the girl background singers from some album years ago. And I said, you know, all right, let him spout. But it's it's kind of a... a, a a funny thing, as you know, and I will say for this piece, um, this project goes back to 78 to 83. Yeah. And uh, we were, our sound man, going all the way back to the earliest days, George Geranius was running Reel to Reel Tape. And for your listeners or viewers, Reel to Reel Tape, you know, this is analog tape um, going back... Um, to the primeval days of recording yeah, and yeah, yeah. he was running real to real tape at his loft in brooklyn uh, to give people background and we were rehearsing at his loft in brooklyn uh, and there were other people living in that building so we literally had to pay them off to allow us to rehearse in george's loft so we had to go to all the neighbors and grease their palms so it was kind of fun yeah. and um so we parked on, on the street went up to George's loft and rehearsed at George's place. And um, so he had a lot of rooms, very high ceilings, and um, rehearsed there along with the producer. And um, these are songs that were left out or not quite finished or for a variety of reasons not mm -hmm. put on albums back in that time period. Now, um, what are some of those reasons? And that's what some of the fans are guessing 
why weren't these songs used? And that's a, a you know question you might ask. And um, vinyl, which was the medium uh, back then, um, could not have more than 36, 38, 40 minutes total um, in the, back in those days. And uh, so that's one reason. Number two, the main reason, was uh, we hire a producer. And very often the producer is the boss. Mm -hmm. And if he like a certain song it doesn't get finished and very often the producer was sitting in the room working on the material with us so if he didn't like a song and it was still born um that song was left on the side of the road and we kept for moving forward with other songs yeah. so these are those songs that either for time reasons or the producer producer um said let's move forward with other songs so these are songs george was running tape um and um like in so supernatural which is the first uh, song that was released um joe bouchard uh, also wait let me back up a little bit joe bouchard actually had to come in and re-sing the song Cu current day today i mean t today about two months ago yeah, yeah. had to come come in back in and re-sing the song not because he didn't sing on it back then, but because the tape degraded so much um, and it got scratchy sounding. So um, uh, Joe came in and um, I believe um, either late last year or early this year and resang the song. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a little bit of that. Also, Richie Castellano had to play some guitar parts and maybe a little keyboard part and he uh, fixed stuff up. But um, I did not have to re-sing anything. Not that I didn't have to, but I did not. Um, Buck did not re-sing anything. Uh, I don't think Buck played anything. Um, but really, some of these questions uh, are better ans answered by Richie, because Richie and Steve Shank, our manager, really are the ones who put this together. fans come from a place of passion um, and it's great to see obviously that the fans you know are there and they seem to be getting you know every new generation there's a new generation of fans I remember when I saw you guys play at the um, Hellfest festival in France in 2012 uh, so now uh, 12 years ago uh, you guys were playing on one of the main stages beautiful sun, sunny day um, and one of my friends there came specifically for you guys uh, he would have been at the time 20 or so, had a blue oyster called face tattoo and would not be your, you know, stereotypical fan that grew up with you guys. Like today still, does it surprise you to see how many, not just young fans there are, but bands coming out, young bands that, you know, list you guys as one of their influences? Um, well, we do have fans. Uh, um, um, the original fans would be in their 50s. Yeah. And um, we do have you know, I see a lot of young people in our audience. Um, so people are discovering us uh, or rediscovering us. Or people say, you know, I, I saw them in the 70s. I didn't know they're still working. Yeah. You know, because I do, I do read social media. And um, so, you know, we're accepting of everybody. Uh, glad to, you know, to see that. And... Um, I am on Cameo, so uh, I do get a lot of requests from people of a variety of ages. So um, um, glad to see it, you know, glad to hear it. And I'm sorry that guy put that on his face. <laughs> it was a it was a small tattoo of the, uh, oh, okay. the logo, but still, he was very, very, very and, passionate. And, you know, one thing it's kind of funny that you mentioned tattoos because every once in a while, not often, but every once in a while, a guy will show me his tattoo on his arm or wherever and it and the logo is backwards uh and and i won't tell him you know i'll, I'll just say right. cool man cool i've watched many of your interviews and it seems that you're not a guy to miss a detail um like that like oh the logo is backwards you spot it straight away um, I'm always impressed with 
um, an interviewer can ask you about like, oh yeah, hey, there was this one show where I saw this poster of the show in the 70s or in the 80s, whatever. This band and the voice are called, and without skipping a beat, you go like, oh yeah, I remember that, this, boom, boom, boom. Are you a bit of an encyclopedia of your own history? Um, you know, only if there's a highlight, you know, I mean, uh, right. um, I mean, we've done 4,500 shows yeah. or so, uh, you know, I'm not counting, but uh, there's a web page that does count, uh, just for your listeners or viewers. There's a web page called Hot Rails to Hull, H-U-L-L. -L. So uh, if anybody wants to go to this guy, uh, uh, this guy's page, it's in Europe. Um, he has taken it upon himself to uh, have a Gigliopedia, which is inside that page. It's Hot, Ra Hot Rails to Hull. Right. And it, it, it has a list of every documented page. Every documented Blue Oyster Cult show with set lists and pictures of ticket stubs. Oh, so wow. it, can't, it can't just be like, hey man, I saw them on uh, sometime in October in 74. No, it can't be that. It, it's got to show the ticket stub. It has to be documented. Yeah. And it has interviews with past crew members, um, like the, la the late Sam Judd, who was on our crew for many years. He's passed away now. But um, it's a very interesting page, including George Sheranius. He has some stuff on there. So it's an interesting page for Blue Oyster Cult fans. I want to ask you uh, a slightly different thing. Um, you know, when you had the album uh, uh, come out um, a couple of years ago, the big return uh, for you guys, when The Symbol Remains came out, how right now like how do you look back on that because that must have been that was the first album that came out in 20 years um yeah. obviously the frontiers team was you know extremely supportive of that um but that can also be scary to do maybe because uh, because you know if an album one album in 20 years that can backfire as well um it didn't backfire at all but but how was that for, for you and the band going through that motion like was that was that ever a concern? Did that keep you up at night? Um, there was a certain amount of pressure. Um, I mean, we've written songs before, and no, no reason why we couldn't do it again. A little different for me because I wrote the songs I wrote with Richie instead of with Buck. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the genesis of it was, um, you know, our management uh, reached out to uh, Frontiers and uh, made a handshake. And uh, it did put uh, pressure on us to come up with the material. Right. Uh, but, um, you know, like a lot of the fans say, you know, Richie had a lot to do with it. And um, um, Richie's a terrific guy and had a lot to do with the project. Um, but living in New York, uh, uh, as I was at that time, um, Richie and I did a lot of writing together, mostly... Uh, and it's in strange ways because it was actually during the COVID times. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that record was made uh, during COVID times uh, at long distances. So um, we, we don't have enough time really to go over that question in, in its entirety. But uh, but um, Buck came up, up to me just before we boarded a flight and said, we really need some lyrics for this record. And... Um, that sparked something in me because on that flight, um, I can't remember from where to where, but I just started scribbling some ideas that just came into my head. And um, those two totally different ideas uh, became uh, Tainted Blood okay. and, and another song. And um, I showed those ideas to Richie when we tried to start writing. And um, these became two songs that, on the record that I co-wrote with Richie, and we fleshed those ideas out in a rent car. No one to wipe my bloody tears. In many wonderful ways, inspiration can come to you, and uh, uh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Eric. I know that this is a busy day for you, and that they've lined up a million interviews for you. So I want to be respectful of your time. So. Yeah, this is an uh, interview day. You know, it's just well, a little. I exactly. have to and get, get them all done. You know?
no worries. I'll let you at least have a, a short break before you have to do your other interview. But okay, thank you so I, much for your time. I love your town. Also, well, uh, we hope to see you again. We hope to see you again. I'd love to play a gig up there anytime. Also, well, come up soon. Come up soon. We'll be there. All right. Bye bye. Cheers. Bye. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.